Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting hour with Zany Mystic on A Fireside Chat. Tonight, my guest is Shala Mata. Shala was born and raised on Vancouver Island, located in Western Canada in 1957, where she lives today. The death of her father in 1975 was the catalyst for over 30 years of study in the field of spirituality, energy, frequency, vibration, and healing. Having overcome a lifetime fear of water, Shala remembered her passion and soul connection to the whales and dolphins of our planet. She has and continues to swim with these loving teachers who so graciously support our ascension process. She lectures frequently on the vital role the whales and dolphins play in our personal and collective ascension process. So let's welcome Shala to the show now. Hi, Shala. How are you? Hello. I'm welcome. How are you, Zany? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Happy uh, happy to everyone. Yes. Ditto. You know, uh, it's interesting that the uh, there's a new disaster film, 2012, which came out today. <laughs> And uh, although they don't, I'm, it's uh, one of the sensationalist versions of uh, the ascension process. Mm-hmm. It is really ultimately about the prophecies and so on. Um, when did you first learn of the ascension process? And for the listeners, could you uh, provide some clarity about what it is? Well, personally, I found out or found uh information about it in the mid-80s, just prior to the convergence, which was 1987. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't really know exactly what it meant. I just sort of had an inkling or a yearning inside that, you know, when you sometimes when you come across some truth, you just inherently know that it's it's real and it's right for you, even though you might not understand the, the depth of it. So mm-hmm. I did some more studying and tried to find some more information. And it's a very broad, uh, very much discussed topic. And there's many schools of thought. And depending on who you speak with, for the most part, the majority agrees that the 2012 or the Ascension, 2012 is more or less the date, that even right. that's up for discussion, as we know. Right. But for the most part, the ascension is the elevation of the planet Earth, mm-hmm. the ascension of the planet Earth into becoming a star, and therefore moving from what has been the third dimensional frequency bandwidth into a fifth dimensional bandwidth. And therefore, those of us that are awake and aware of that uh, progression or journey, we are doing the same, uh, mm-hmm. you know, bringing all our soul parts together and becoming a star, becoming light, however you want to look at that. So mm-hmm. that's that's the general um, understanding that I operate from, and I know that there's many layers to that depending on your understanding of geometries and har- harmonics and mm-hmm. holographic light and quantum physics and so on and so forth, but yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yes, it all kind of uh, does come together. Um, yeah. And also, <clears throat> it seems that we're, we are moving back from a fragmented consciousness in which we were splintered or mirrored like a broken glass into bits and pieces into uh, what we started as, which is a unified consciousness. Exactly. And a lot of what has been, quote, the uh, light worker star seed ascension syndrome that we've all experienced in one level or another over the last several years is really, for the most part, again, this is taking it into a simplified description, is bringing all of those parts of the soul or those fragmented parts back into oneness or back into wholeness so that mm-hmm. you are one spark, one piece, one one part of the the whole. And it's in that very... Uh, ex- extended expression of our uh, light of our soul that many of us are dealing with some old <laughs> some old things that we thought we'd sort of put away in our suitcases and had dealt with and now mm-hmm. they're ready to be unpacked again and some of us are going I've, I've dealt with that but just like there's many layers of the onion there's many layers to the frequency or to the electrical wiring that is us 
as a whole and uh, and those parts of us. So it's a very exciting time, but at the same time, it, it's challenging and certainly not boring, as I'm sure you would agree. Oh, I agree totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, one of the things that um, is hard, I think, for so many people to wrap their heads around is that one, we're living in veiled consciousness, and the other is that we're limited by our five senses, and they they tell us that um, there are various controlling elites, uh, whatever you want to call them. There's a whole range of theories about who is actually or has been manipulating this reality um, into the dark side, and that what they would like to try to stop the process that is inevitable. Um, mm-hmm. Are you? Do you? What do you think about that? Well, you. I certainly am aware of it, and I think uh, it speaks to the polarity that is present on this planet. It's been here as part of our evolutionary process. Mm. Uh, I remember years and years and years ago attending. Uh, it was sort of like a one-day lecture. It was by Lee Carroll, who is the channel for Cryon. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think it was like when one of his first books had just come out. And one of the things that sort of was just said, you know, in in the offing was things are never as they seem. Mm-hmm. And it just, it stayed with me because uh, we, you, we are dealing with our senses and our third dimensional, very linear perspective <laughs> because that's, the dimension that we're in, even though there's many bandwidths of higher frequency here that we are all, uh, you know, calibrating and navigating, Mm -hmm. we're still uh, dealing with those limited senses, and because of that, we take things as what they appear to be is what they are, and they never are quite that. So, yes, there is certainly a level of light and a level of dark, and within that, there are many layers of... Uh, energy, some probably a little more dense and uh, a little more agenda-driven than others. Mm -hmm. But, again, things are never what they seem. And everything that I've ever experienced is that the more light and the more love that you put towards any issue, whether it's a personal healing issue, whether it's something in your collective, uh, that pretty much will bring it up to, to an energy that can be much more accepted. Mm-hmm. Energy never dies. It mm-hmm. never. We just can transform it and transmute it. Mm-hmm. So even though there is this uh, clinging, dark, agenda-driven, controlling aspect, we have that in each of us. And the more of us that we transmute into light, the less of that will be available. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes that, a lot of sense. Yeah. And um, I try not to get into the whole them versus us, even right. though. Right. Uh, right. You know, it's here, and it's it's been a a, a school. Uh, the Earth has been a tremendous school, and one of the um, uh, channels by the Arcturians a few years ago said that the ascension is really uh, our graduation uh, from grade twelve. <laughs> right. <laughs> So just like if we think about ourselves in grade 12, how excited we were, we finished our school, and some of us were contemplating uh, going back to school to take in further education. Some of us were just going to go backpack around Europe. Some of us didn't have a clue what we were going to do. But we all held an, ex- uh, an excitement, even in the unknowingness, yeah. there was an excitement. And so I view the ascension as that, a graduation out of the realm or the third-dimensional uh, ring of karma where we continually have to keep repeating. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, that brings with it a whole new level of schooling and exp- expression. But, again, it's all based on your perspective. Right, right. Um, now, um if if the planet is indeed if if the Earth or Gaia or how, whatever you want to call her, some people refer to her as Terra. Mm-hmm. Um, if she is indeed ascending to star status, then uh, it seems likely that we're going to experience those of us who are uh, uh, gifted or privileged or graced preparing with, <laughs> preparing yes to to <laughs> go with her. 
uh-huh. and not be um, el- and not go elsewhere. Uh, that our physical bodies would have to be transmuted as well to, in order to Absolutely. make that shift. And I've read various theories that you know there will be we'll have physical bodies still we'll still eat. And uh, my own personal feeling has been that um, it's highly possible that we will not have to uh, experience a physical death if that is our sole choice. Exactly. And, um, that how does how would that all play out? I mean, there's a fourth density that we would have to pass through very quickly, it seems, and right. um, then we would be transmuted into bodies of light. Is there a period of time that that might? Uh, how do how do your sources say that that might come about? <laughs> Well, this is probably uh, the million dollar, the the trillion dollar <laughs> question, and, <that's laughs> and I think it's probably one it. that's been uh, debated and and queried probably more than any uh, when we talk about the ascension of the planet. Uh, yeah. All of us want to know, well, what's going to happen? And yeah. in my yeah. <laughs> exactly, and that's the nature of us, and that's that's good. That's yeah. very very good. Yeah. Uh, myself. Uh, it's been something that I've studied and listened to a lot of, you know, we've all done endless workshops and we've probably mm-hmm. all read many, many books and there's many theories. Mm-hmm. Uh, myself personally, um, the, you know, there's, I've been told or read that there is going to be this massive, um, wave or bandwidth of light and the physical body would just you know, go sort of go poof and <laughs> sort of like from the Star Trek, you know, beam me up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, there is those that believe that and there is that theory. Oh, then okay. there is the other that I've read. And, and again, I think there's a level or a thread of truth mm. through all of this. And what right. I have found in my own personal life is that, what, you know, whether you read or whether it's channeling you're getting on your mailing list, or people are writing, or whatever the case may be, if there's a thread of truth that is your personal flavor uh, mm. that resonates through various readings or channelings or writings, whatever the case may be, then that's a pretty good indication that you're getting something that's you know, resonating deeply within you. Mm. So I think there is a thread of truth through all of these. But the other theory or the other thing that I've heard is that the planet, as I said, is begun, going to become a star, uh, and there will be certain pockets or, or areas of the Earth that are going to be able to ascend, and then there's going to be some areas of the Earth where the energy is too dense, and thereby uh, having to remain in the third dimensional density until uh, such time that those inhabitants and that, that part of the Earth can achieve a higher frequency or bandwidth of light. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when, to get your head around that, sort of like, well, what does that mean? Is the planet going to split apart? <laughs> no, uh, but I think if you just look at the planet now as a whole, uh, if you were to go stand at the base of Mount Shasta in northern California, you would have a far different feeling than if you were to go stand in the middle of, say, Darfur or a war zone in mm. the Middle East. Mm, absolutely. And you know that is a that is a, a palpable legitimate energy mm-hmm. you know whether you come across one person or not that's an energy and that energy is is there and some of i mean even yourself if you've traveled and you just come across uh you know a place where you know that there's been a battle or maybe you don't know that there's been a battle but you walk across the field and you just feel something that doesn't quite quite feel right Oh, you know, that is real. That energy, again, doesn't die. It just transmutes and transforms. Mm-hmm. So there's a level of truth to that, that there will be some pockets of the earth that will uh, ascend. And some say that it's because there's fifth dimensional cities of light that are above these uh, higher energy places, and those will sort of come into being one, just like we will be doing that with our lower dimensional and higher dimensional selves. Mm-hmm. So... It's one of those multifaceted, multi-layered questions, and I think for me, being uh, an Aquarian with an incredible oh. uh, heavy-duty <laughs> brain that won't shut off, uh, I have to just uh, go with what feels <clears throat> right. And the mm. thing that feels right for me is to just 
assume that I'm going to be in the right place at the right time and to focus in the moment now on looking at or bringing together or transmuting any old issues or patterns or agendas that are emotionally stunting me or physically hampering me or mentally causing me distress. And that's the best place to be. And Mm. where we are in 2012 at the solstice or whatever date is going to be the magic date, uh, you'll be prepared, sort of Mm. like when you're going to go on a trip. If you know you're going to Africa, you're not going to you're not going to pack your parka. You're going to pack <laughs> what you pretty much know you, or what you think you're going to need, and then you know you leave a little space in your suitcase just in case you have to pick up something on the way. And yeah. I think for me that feels like the most uh, common sense approach because none of us really know. We know. And if we get too wrapped up in what we've been told, we might miss what we're receiving as the truth for us. That's right. That's right. And, of course, <clears throat> there's always uh, benefit in being present in the moment, which is the only time we have. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> because, we, like you said, we really don't know what's going to happen, and it may be different for each person. Um, well, exactly. I mean, time is uh, certainly, again, uh, that's one of those big debatable <laughs> right. uh, areas of information. Uh, we certainly... Uh, can feel without question that time is speeding up, or it certainly feels that way. It's not linear uh, in the higher dimensions. It's more circular, and there's therefore uh, everything happening concurrently. Mm -hmm. And as we sort of let go of our um, issues around time and what things look like, you know, we're sort of a little bit more fluid in allowing ourselves to just be present. Mm -hmm. And... The biggest teachers I think I've had in my life, uh, mirroring that to me, has been the whales and the dolphins. And oh, they, yes. I mean, if there's ever um, beings here that are completely uh, physical and yet in service in such a, a beautiful, loving, higher dimensional realm uh, and shape-shifting between those dimensions, always back in service to the planet, that is... To me, you know, let's just model ourselves there and do the best we can. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's it. I was just going to ask you <clears throat> about your personal experiences with the whales and the dolphins. Mm. And I've I've read and heard that um, the the whales have been uh, kind of the the guardians of the planet for. Lance, can we planet. get you to speak up just a bit? Oh, Thank me? you. Okay. Um, and that the dolphins have been. Um, uh, you know, um, maybe I should have said yell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the dolphins and the whales have been um, holding the space for us from a higher dimension. What's your experience? Well, that's a good description. It's an overly simplified one in some ways. Uh, if you want to look at this from uh, a physics perspective, th- this whole... Um, experience that we're having is a hologram. And from the aspect of the whales and the dolphins, uh, one thing that I've experienced in a personal way, being with them and then experiencing them in the higher realms, is that every planet that has reached ascension status, the Arcturians speak about this a lot, uh, any planet that has reached ascension status, like Arcturus, for example, or Sirius, or the Pleiades, uh, you know, well-known starseed family alliance planets, they've all had whales and dolphins living on them at the time of their ascension and continue to house them. And that that's just an indication of the significance of the whales and the dolphins. But for for the average person to understand, the whale and the dolphin, the whale in particular, sings the reality of the hologram into form on our planet. They they swim the grids, the planetary grids, both uh, within and around the planet. And if you you look at just the migratory patterns of, say, uh, the humpback whales, for example, it's thousands of miles that they travel on my coast from Alaska down to Hawaii. Uh, And that is, in part, those great long journeys 
on a third dimensional level, yes, it's for birthing and calving and eating. But on a higher dimensional level, that great travel it allows them to hone the. They keep the grid in place. So really, they are a, a, a function of holding the reality in form, the biosphere in form, and they have a tremendous capacity to shape shift from physical form into the higher into their higher dimensional aspect pick up frequency vibration and codes they work very much in codes which is their song or their sounds and uh. then they bring that back to the grids so they are a vital part to maintaining the structure of the biosphere but also the vibrational wellness if you will of the actual planet and the dolphins of course are uh, a different frequency than the whales, but again, doing much, much similar, very similar work. So to have them here on the planet is an honor, and they are known, the whales in particular are known as the living libraries or the ancient ones, mm-hmm. and they, because of the fact that they are literally singing the planet into being and holding that, holding that in, in form. Uh, so the fact that they are living in an environment that is a challenge, just as many of us are in our physical bodies, mm-hmm. not only makes them approachable, but is a signal to us that they are needing our support uh, heart to heart. So there's you know, many levels of ways that you can connect with them, mm-hmm. and, and there's many groups that are, that are doing just that. I personally work with them in the higher dimensional realms, and once a month I host a, a global meditation for the, with the whales and the dolphins. Oh. And then there's uh, it, my next one happens to be tomorrow, as a matter of fact. But uh, there are groups that feel very strongly that they need to protect their environment, the the, the oceans. And mm-hmm. if 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 you're called to do that, then then the whales and the dolphins honor you for that. Then there's another level or another group of consciousness here on the planet where where many are communicating and connecting with them in, in a more fifth dimensional way, and they're receiving wisdom and they're receiving information, and the whales and the dolphins you know, honor and love that. But then there's even an, a higher dimensional way that you can connect with them, which is really when you start getting into the holographic nature of how they are co-creating here with us. Huh. And they honor every way that you wish to connect with them based on whatever is your comfort level. They're just here in service to help our planet ascend. It seems <clears throat> pretty barbaric um, for us to continue to be hunting the whales and the dolphins and of course, we know that there are now increasingly more um, dead zones in the oceans. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. um, it seems that uh, our the hologram is breaking down. <laughs> well, the hologram, I mean, that aspect has always been in the hologram. Mm. Uh, and it's sort of a play. Uh, again, this is another one of those very debatable... <laughs> <laughs> topics like ascension, right. but uh, on one hand, the whales and the dolphins uh, hold no malice and no right. judgment, right? Right. But at the, on the other hand, they are very tired, and uh, te- and they find it tedious, and it's very wearing on them, just as it is for us when we are for us too, yes. <laughs> dealing with a, a low or a dense frequency or a dense uh, consciousness. Uh, most of us just, you know, walk away. Yeah, yeah. The whales and the yeah. dolphins, uh, you know, they feel this, the same thing. It is barbaric that there would be countries that would consider them food. I mean, in my mind, yeah. it's, it's like I, I, I can't even comprehend. But no. again, no. one of the things they teach us is to Stay out of judgment. Right, that's right. And, you know, I it, when I first connected with them and became so passionate about my reunion with them, if you will, uh, I fell very strongly into that polarized position of of uh, being so uh, upset 
mm-hmm. about what was occurring for them, and, and it affected my ability to be, be uh, as good as I could be in mm-hmm. my healing work or in my ability to channel them. And they taught me that it's okay to, to have an opinion, but mm-hmm. to be so uh, in judgment, it just fuels the polarity that's causing the countries to hunt them in the first place. And uh, in addition, it lowers our own frequency when we're in judgment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, it's, it's, I, I just want to make it clear that I honor anyone that wishes to uh, get out there and support their the oceans and prepare to keep them as clean and to not have great, huge hulks of plastic mm-hmm. being floating in the ocean and, and, and trapping them and so on and so forth, that all of that is occurring and mm. it's gut-wrenching to know about. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah. uh, the whales and the dolphins often are very conscious of where they are going. Uh, a couple of years ago when there was a big hunt on uh, with the, down in the Antarctic uh-huh. by the Japanese government, which still goes on, it was very controversial, uh, there was a, a group that I was involved in. We were connecting with the whales. It was pr- primarily whales in this particular instance uh, from around the planet, not just in that particular area. And it was surprising to get a lot of their messages. A lot of them were tired. A lot of them were fed up. None of them held malice. Uh, a lot of them knew exactly where they were swimming into you know that they were swimming into an area that would we would we would call danger uh-huh. they have no sense of fear and a lot of them were saying look i've been here for a long time i'm tired i'm going to offer myself so that you know other members of my family can cannot you know it was yeah. very very much a very human sense of community and um so, you know, there's, there's again, there's that saying that Lee Carroll brought through from Cryon, things are never what they seem. Uh, it also seems that um, the animals and <clears throat> insects and nature and trees and so on are able to communicate telepathically. Yeah. And it's almost as if humans have disconnected from the, the grid. <laughs> That's a nice way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I love how you said that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, yeah. some people are are naturally intuitive, and they they can connect to various uh, aspects of the the interconnected oneness. Mm-hmm. But um, it seems that we've just become so disconnected that uh, it, it's it's not it's just almost tragic. It, it becomes I, very difficult to be in the world uh, mm-hmm. and not of it. Exactly, and I think if you look at it. Uh, from a human perspective, we've become so compartmentalized. I mean, mm. if you live on Vancouver Island in the Pacific Northwest, then then this is your whole world, even though your country goes from east to west. And yeah. and uh, same in America. Same in it doesn't matter where you go. We we have these little bubbles, these little <laughs> compartments. Yeah. But the animal kingdom, even though they they live on the seven continents and there's many many different species. Fundamentally, they're all uh, connected, and they all yeah. do relate to each other. Uh, and the whale and the dolphin, of course, being the highest conscious beings on the planet, uh, they actually communicate with all of the animal kingdoms, uh, whether they be land-based, air-based, or sea-based. And some of the concerns from many in the higher realms and, uh, and here is that there's been what appears to be a heavy extinction rate occurring with many of these beautiful species. Mm-hmm. And, and that is occurring, and, and that is sort of what a lot, if you look at the earth in terms of the human population, that's occurring as well. So, mm-hmm. again, there is a school of, oh, my God, we're killing all the animals, and a lot of the animals are very tired and they're, they're having a difficulty in their environments, which absolutely no question. And any effort that we can make to communicate and support them is very, very graciously received, whether it be a polar bear, you know, a, a honeybee, yeah. what have you. There is a consciousness yeah. there that uh-huh. we can connect with. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You know, when we talk about the planet ascending, it's not just humans. 
It's every conscious living thing, from the rock to the little sugar ant to the hummingbird to the polar bear to the whale to everything. Everything, everything. is here. Everything Down is alive. The... Everything is conscious. Yeah, yeah. It's spinning at different rates of vibration. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's that's um, that's something that I think is is hard for us to wrap our minds around, but that certainly is how it seems to me as well. Well, I think in the, uh, as more and more of us like do these kind of wonderful interviews, and there's, I mean, let's look at how much information is out there. I think we're becoming less and less compartmentalized. I mean, just look at if you if this is a kind of an upset to the world, but if you look at October and the economic uh, wave that went around the world, uh, it just showed us how interconnected we really are. Mm, absolutely. And even though it was from a fear-based issue, it really did show we really are very, very connected. And I think there's less and less compartmentalization, these little bubbles where you think that you're, you're absolved from whatever might be happening to your neighbor. Mm-hmm. That, that idea of, well, as long as I look after me, I don't have to worry about anybody else, I think that's, that is fast melting <laughs> like melting yeah. butter in a hot pan yeah well you're just like the uh the arctic zones <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there again is another huge uh area of debate the whole yeah. global warming uh I, I i think it's a again i think there's a thread of truth in all of what's being said and I just, anything that I hear that's too fear-based or too laced with a fear that would be agenda-driven, right. you know, I just kind of weigh it out. But, right. um, it, again, you know, there's a lot to be said for what's happening in the Arctic. Um, now, so, uh, well, uh, where? what's your sense of where we're at presently in 2009 uh, moving closer to 2010 as far as the energetics and so on? Well, when we came out of the gate at the beginning of January this year, no. uh, my experience has been, if sort of, I think you probably agree, if you look at the last five years, or five or six years, uh, the first six months of the year feel like we're you know, really slogging through some pretty heavy stuff. It's like... Yeah. You know, and then the last six months of the year, uh, the energy, you know, is building, and even though we still have a lot of stuff that we're transmuting, it's the things seem to just, oh, you know, get bigger and bigger, and then we move that into the next year, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're, today, we're at that pivotal, uh, moment where we're exactly halfway there, for, for the most part, and, you know, the solstice is known as, the time where the sun stands still, you stand still uh, on the, at the sun, where it, it seems to set and rise at the exact same place on the horizon. So mm-hmm. it's a very um, metaphoric place. So we've sort of, the first six months of this year, or thereabouts, have been every month accruing into energy from the previous month, and the build has been very intense. I mean, for the most part, everyone has been dealing with physical symptoms, you know, it's a body pain, headaches, uh, emotional ups and downs, relationship issues, communication issues. I mean, the symptomology and the feeling, the fatigue, all of that, we've been going through and we are going to continue. But from an energy perspective, we are at a moment right now where the transmission or the galactic transmission of energy that's been coming in through the central sun for the last, uh, you know, since the March equinox, actually, uh-huh. has been very, very high frequency. And a lot of the light that does come in from the higher realms is undifferentiated light. And our uh, aura or our uh, energy bodies don't articulate undifferentiated light as easily as a differentiated light. Mm. So part of that is us kind of finding our our balance. And many of us, are 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 way ahead of, energetically of our physical bodies and <laughs> we're feeling right. that but right. we're at a point now where the level of light that's coming in is unprecedented and is coming in it used to be it would come in uh, you get a little download or transmission and then it would stable off and it would sort of 
sit there for a little bit, and then it would peak up again maybe you know, a month or two later. Well, now it may, might be sitting for a day or two, and yeah. then it picks up again. So, yeah. And actually, we're all, per, for the most part, we're, we're handling it quite well. But this, the last six months of 209, from what I'm seeing, are going to be tremendously filled with, what you have sown in the last six months, and that's not a cop-out, but some are really, really uh, clarifying and recalibrating and doing a lot of internal transparency within themselves, whatever that means for them. And there are others that are just you know, shutting that door right now, saying, no, it's too much, it's too heavy. So wherever you are uh, and however things are flowing, the next six months will mirror that. So it's going to be a very significant period of time to indicate just what you've done and what you've still got to do. Mm, very well said. <laughs> very well said. <laughs> As that, and that's how it looks today. I mean, next month. Right. <laughs> it might be an entirely different story. We don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, whenever I sit down to write my uh, monthly article, I, I've i tried and tried and tried to write it like a week before so I can always have it, you know, nice and ready to go on the first of the month. And invariably, uh, I, 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 I just seem to, things seem to come up and I need to be in that energy pretty close to what that month is going to be before I can write about it. Yeah. And yeah. if I look at the thread that goes through each month, the thread is that we're all uh, you know, dealing with uh, enormous preparation, shifts in energy, cu- you know, culminating in these big transmissions, uh, changes in our relationships, changes in our perspectives. Many people are changing jobs. They're getting divorced. They're moving countries. They're uh, losing. It's just a massive change. So mm. that is a big evolutionary process that most are dealing with, even if they're not aware of, quote, ascension. They're all dealing with energy on this planet that's making them change in some way. Either they're resisting it, which is a form of action, or they're going with it, which is action in it, in itself. Yes, and it seems that the, those who are resisting are going to have the hardest time uh, dealing with the changes because they are going to feel it the most, I think. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's no, no question. Uh, as much as those of us that are, are been, you know, really struggling to stay balanced as we continue to evolve, those mm. that are uh, not choosing to do that are rapidly finding themselves in, in some pretty big mud puddles, and they're overwhelmed. And, and light workers and star seeds, and I don't like using labels, but for lack of a better term. You know, those of us that are holding uh, our energy fairly well, you know, we're we're also helping stabilize that collective that's very um, wobbly because you know they just don't know which end is up. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get harder and harder, and it's uh, it, we're all in this together. So the more stable we can maintain our own integrity of our energy, even if it's just you know, for an hour at a time, if you're going through some pretty heavy stuff, that is a tremendous service to the planet. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And you know, it it, it also uh, says that um, we we don't know uh, how how much we impact uh, and affect the whole world. In other words, we could be washing dishes at the sink and balancing some. Uh, uh-huh. aspect of of humanity that we're not aware of because we, as you said we don't know things are not as they seem exactly and i mean uh, again we can come back to the animal kingdom mm. uh, i mean you can you can walk where i live you can walk along the seashore and you can you know sometimes see whales breaching or uh hummingbirds i i just saw one a little while ago out in front of my house here and mm. You know, you can look at it and say, oh, that's just a lovely whale or that's just a lovely hummingbird. But on a more uh, frequency uh, bandwidth or from uh, that perspective, I mean, both of them are integral parts of holding the biosphere in form. Yes, yes, absolutely. So nothing is as it seems. And 
you know, we can look at that whale and just think, oh, it's just a whale, but then we also know that they are uh, pivotal here. And same for us. If we're standing there in a really good, in a really good vibe, washing those dishes, <laughs> yeah, and, and we and we're aware that what we that what we are is more than just you know some bones and some flesh and some consciousness, but that right. we are batteries. We're like big receivers and transmitters. And if we're aware that what we're receiving and transmitting is balanced, again, that's a very big asset. To to every to the planet. Well, I'm fortunate in that I have a hummingbird feeder outside my mm. window, <laughs> so <laughs> I can take my mind off the dishes by, you know, yeah. connecting with the hummingbirds, which are just absolutely. Are they amazing? Oh my gosh! There's, there's just no word for it. I mean, you know, talk I just about love them. talk about a fifth dimensional thing. Absolutely. They can go up and down. Yes. They can go in circles. They yep. can hold themselves in midair, yep. and not, and yet, at the same time, they are in form. But they're moving so fast, they almost go out of form. Yes, uh, I mean they really are a, a evidence that they're the veils are very thin in some realms between uh, yes. <laughs> the lower and higher dimensional. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I I had a little conversation with a bumblebee the other day, too, that was mm -hmm. trying to tell me something. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, my initial reaction was, well, it's just lost or it's looking for something. around And then I, I got the message, no, it's trying to communicate and show me something. Mm -hmm. And so I, I asked it, you know, well, what is it? You know, show me. And eventually I did find, you know, whatever message I got from it. And um, mm -hmm. it's just a, that wonderful connection when you... Um, experience uh, all life and start to communicate with it, and I love it. And yesterday, I don't know if you've noticed this, but for the first time, and it might have to do with the solstice, <clears throat> there were energy discharges in over the mountains, almost mm -hmm. like an electrical show. And oh, absolutely! Got, yeah, it got me outside to look at the stars, and they were mm -hmm. different. Yeah, I mean, usually they just you know, they sparkle and they twinkle and there's some out there. But, I mean, this time they were like brilliant diamonds that were just pulsing and, and alive. And uh, it was quite a show. I mean, I, I, I was looking for other uh, forms of life out there. I always look for UFOs and very... Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> and I never see them, at least not consciously. And maybe they're there and I'm just not, you know... As yeah. And, but um, I do uh, wonder about our space family and how close they are. And, uh, you know, I, we do have a lot of help uh, through this process. And, and oh, yeah. part of, I do believe that uh, many uh, higher density uh, civilizations are, are uh, assisting us through this shift. Oh, no question. Yeah. No question. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, I, I know that there's many that would would want to argue that point because, again, you, there are some that, you know, if it can't be seen, held, taste, touched, you know, the, yeah. again, those five senses in the most uh, critical form, then they, the, things don't exist. And yet we can still use the argument, well, you can't see a radio wave, but you can tune into it and hear it and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, right. So uh, the energy uh, that I have experienced, particularly from the uh, full moon that we had just on the 7th of this month. I mean, May and June have been pretty big months, but, I mean, if we want to look at that, we can say every month has been big, because they are. I mean, this is mm. no question. Mm. But uh, in terms of this month in and of itself, I mean, that full moon opened up some pretty big energy. And um, for me, uh, the you know, the week of the, you know, the 13th, 14th, 15th, and there, uh, it was like such an enormous transmission or shift mm -hmm. uh, in in big energy. And I, I knew it was like an integration and a preparation for the solstice. I mean, we'd been hearing about that and so on and so forth. Uh, personally, I, I had a lot of headaches, which I don't get very much anymore, but mm -hmm. I, I was you know, getting a lot of that. I was feeling a lot of fatigue and just I just knew, okay, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah. But what's been said for about this particular solstice is that we really are in a form of graduation status in terms of specific bandwidths or frequencies of energy, and we're stepping into something quite 
new as uh, this month kind of comes to an end. And those changes, and there's going to be some eclipse coming in July, I believe, and the changes that will be culminating as we move into the second half of the year uh, are going to bring a lot of, um, like the, you know, it's going to reinforce a lot of what we've done already but if in the first six months, but again, another huge initiation into transformation uh, for the individual and for the collective. So they're, they're saying that this solstice is really uh, a spiral of new energy that is, you know, going to really set the stage for the next six months. Well, good. Notwithstanding, you know, the, the monthly astrological changes that come with the moons and so on and so forth. So some tremendously powerful streams of energy that are coming from a lot of those starseed family planetary systems that some of us feel more aligned to than others, but nevertheless are still impacting the Earth. Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed the uh, the channel material from the Arcturians and, of course, oh, yeah. the Pleiadians as well, but the Arcturians mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what's your sense of the, of their energy? Their energy, I mean, as a little girl, I remember uh, looking up at the stars at night, and I think a lot of us that did this and just felt such a sense of peace and mm. longing or uh, remembering or something. <laughs> And my experience with them over the last 25 years has been they are the most profoundly loving, uh, intellectually stimulating, yeah. Yeah. Uh, very, uh, you know, um, supportive and completely in service to their little brothers and sisters, if you want to look yeah. at it from the familiar position of helping us ascend. Uh, yeah. As are the Pleiadians, as are the Syrians, and every and and many others, the Andromedans and the Venusians. I mean, you could go on and on. But the Arcturians and the Pleiadians, those are those are, those are the big leagues that are very very much involved with our evolutionary path and our evolutionary process, and they've been involved with us, you know, pretty much from the get go. Mm -hmm. So my experience with the Arcturians has been an, an absolute. Uh, education in holographic quantum healing practices and remembering that sense of galactic family. They're very uh, intellectual. Uh, yeah. And it's just uh, tremendously loving and very, very much offering service, tools, techniques, reinforcements, confirmation, affirmation, support, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. to those of us that feel that we can communicate with them or reach out to them. And again, the Pleiadians are doing the same and many other of the other starseed uh, alliances or families that that we've all had. We've Many of us have had many lifetimes on this planet and many off planet. Right, right. Um, now, some say that <clears throat> uh, the Arcturians and Pleiadians and others from these higher densities, I, and I don't, I don't know what the, what the, uh, what, uh, how far that goes up. You know, mm -hmm. you, you might have a better idea than I do as as to the density at which they reside, but um, mm -hmm. that they have allowed or encouraged some of their aspects to inc actually physically incarnate in bodies. Mm -hmm. in order to help channel their energy and, and help balance the planet. You know, Is I've that... heard that. Uh, my experience with them, to answer the first part of your question, you know, it's something I've asked my own Arcturian guides and those that I know that, that do channel. Some of them you've, you've interviewed, some, some friends of mine that I know that have been on your show and they are uh, Arcturian channels and Pleiadian channels for that matter. Uh -huh. uh, my experience has been that uh, once you're at the fifth dimension, uh, you know, we have a tendency to think of the dimensions in uh, like a linear stacking form, like a high rise, <laughs> right. and it's really not that way, <laughs> and right. it's really not that way here either, but again, it's, it's how things seem. Um, and so there are fifth dimensional uh, Arcturian consciousness, and there's seventh dimensional Arcturian consciousness. 
So again, it's not so much of a, of a linear leveling. Uh, it would be again, it's a vibration, a vibratory rate. So you, there are some communicating with fifth dimensional Arcturians, and then there are some communicating with seventh dimensional or density Arcturians, and that would be the same for the Pleiadians and so on and so forth. So from that perspective, uh, I, I think that makes sense. Just as here on the planet Earth, there are you and I know that there are some pretty dense third-dimensional people that we meet at the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> and then, oh yes, Indeed and then you. there's that lovely person that just uh, is unconditional love, and they're clearly uh, you know operating in a much higher bandwidth, the frequency. Yes, yes, you can feel uh, the difference. Yes. Oh no question. Now whether I I really can't say that I have a complete understanding on whether uh, a dimensional being from Arcturus, for example, has actually reincarnated here in form or burst here in form in that way. Um, I don't know. I know that everything I've seen and learned from them is that they are in service to us. They can never take away. This is the planet of free will and choice, and they can never interfere with that ability of us Mm -hmm. and ours. And Mm -hmm. therefore, in order for them to work with us, we have to invite them in. And that would be not only the Arcturians and Pleiadians, that would be angels and ascended masters and any higher dimensional teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that they they need us awake and communicating with them so that we can help the earth and vice versa. Again, it's sort of like I go back to the whales and dolphins again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't, I, I can't say for sure. I think there's, it's another one of those areas that I'd have to look at more. I haven't personally ever met someone that I could, uh, uh, that I could unequivocally say, you are off planet. You are not. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I haven't, I've always been able to see uh, energy since I was a little girl, and and while some some people's fields are definitely very beautifully high vibrationally sound, I've never seen someone that looks like they aren't of this of this human uh, species. Right. That's me personally, and that's really from the only place I can speak. Now, of course, we have um, there. Many people are aware of the numerous kids that are coming in now. Mm. Mm-hmm. The indigos and crystals yes. and rainbows, which represent different um, rays of mm-hmm. creation, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, and they're closer to the source or origin of the color sound vibrations, which are much uh, clearer. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, again, uh, I, I've never had children in this lifetime. Okay. I've had uh, an experience with many that have, and there's no question. Uh, again, Lee Carroll uh, brought that through with the Cryon several years ago about the indigo mm. children. And oh, yeah. for those of us, even without that knowledge, you just have to uh, connect with some of these children. I was just recently in London teaching a one-day workshop in May, and I had the pleasure of staying with a beautiful uh, lady who's become my soul sister, and she's got two beautiful little girls, Lily and, and Hannah, Oh, and Hannah yeah. is three three years old, going on three thousand. I, I wow. swear. <laughs> and I just, you know, met her, and you, you just can't not know yeah. that oh, this yeah. is uh, an awakened master uh, yeah. looking at you. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I mean, when I think of myself at that age, or when I think of babysitting kids when I was in my, you know. Uh, early teens, uh, uh, there was not that awareness. Now, some of that's because of me, I know, because I'm more awake, but there's no question that these children are here. They're holding uh, a higher form of DNA. They've activated it, which, again, is an electrical wiring, and many Uh, of us are, (laughs) you and me, we're having to work diligently to to rewire ourselves, and they're coming in that, that way. It's sort of like a new computer. Yeah. And they are here, and they are tremendously offering uh, support and creating a foundation for the new earth, again, whatever that is going to be at the time that it is. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Trying to be well, politically correct here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the way you put that. I mean, it's, it's the only way you can actually say it and and tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, because it changes. So. But, but a, a bit, yes. In answering your question regarding the crystal children, uh, the rainbow children, the indigo children, I'm not really a big one for labels, but right, but right. You can't. Even someone that hasn't had children and has not been known as being a big child person, you can't not be overwhelmingly affected by these beings when you have the occasion to communicate with them. Even That's, we babies, yeah. you, you can just feel it. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I've been able to look at a picture and get the energy. Yes. And yes, in fact, I mean, there's a lot so, of artists so that powered, are doing and, that. Yeah. Yeah, and and there's one child uh, in the healing group that had cancer, mm. and she is so clearly an uh, uh, an awakened master that mm. um, I I could almost not look at her. It was so intense, just the mm-hmm. vibration. Mm-hmm. So um, we we they're are they're here, the... you know. They're here in service. They're here, and and a lot of them, uh, you know, I, what I've seen, a lot of them aren't staying around. I mean, some of them are leaving. They cut. They're coming in for a few short years, and then they're. They're leaving and coming back again. Uh, right, they're recycling right. themselves to maintain the integrity of that that vibration. Well, so uh, there's so many things that are occurring that we really, again, coming back to things are never what they appear to be. So many magical things that are happening uh, that you know we don't necessarily understand or see or have an awareness of that are going on behind the scenes, sort of like. You know, when you're working on your computer, you've got virus scanners and things going on in the background. You don't even know what's being Mm. picked up and gotten rid of. (laughs) You Mm. never see it, but it's happening nevertheless. And downloads. (laughs) We're we're all being downloaded, too. So that's the other thing. (laughs) We're upgraded. Downloads. Yeah, these transmissions. I mean, today's a perfect example. Uh, I gave three or four healing sessions today, and many of the people were complaining of, feeling a, a dizziness, or their heads felt um, congested, not physically congested, just kind of chaotic. And that's mm. often an indication of a, of a download or a tr- transmission coming in. Sometimes the crown chakra might need to be adjusted. It's generally a wiring issue. And a lot of my healing work has been helping bridge the physical body with the energetics. But when we're having these kind of transmissions and mm. downloads, as, as you call them, and as, as so rightly describing them, uh, you know, it is a it's a big event, and it 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 does take a lot for the body to uh, to recalibrate and to get back into an equilibrium. And and you know, when it's our computer, you know, we accept that it's downloading and it's going to take 20 minutes, and then you have to reboot it, and then it's got to come back up, and you got to give it a code, and it's got to ask permission, and and we just accept that. But when it's us, yeah. we just say to our body, "Well, what do you mean you can't get up?" <laughs> yes, you know, we're true. very unforgiving. <laughs> that's true. Well, you know, so so that's part of what some of those symptoms are of the fatigue and the dizziness and the body pain. And, and it's important um, to listen to those. We're is, almost yeah. we're almost out of time. The hour went by so quickly, and oh. it was so interesting. And thank um, you. I enjoyed it. Make, I want to make sure that people can get hold of you. How can they reach you to find out more about your uh, your energy work and so on? Well, my email is Shala, S as in Sam, H-A-L-A, at lightworker.com. I believe it's on your site. And my website is http forward slash Shala dot lightworker.com. They can email me. I'm going to be lecturing with a colleague in Calgary July 4th on electrical nutrition, which is, again, the wiring of the body and helping people bridge that going to be teaching in November, again in London, November 8th, and then again with my colleague, uh, Denis Histan, November 14th, back in London, helping people keep their wiring intact, keep their bodies handling these transmissions as best and easy as they can. So Wonderful. people can email me, and I'd be more than happy to give them any information that I can. Fantastic. Well, Shala, you've been a, a, a wonderful guest and a lot of fun, and we've learned a lot and, re- and validated a lot. And uh, I can't thank you enough for being on the show, and uh, I, I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Well, I, I want to say ditto. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Uh, I thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed your questions, very thoughtful questions, and I just love what you're doing, which is giving a format and a place for this information to be out for people to to access. It's important that we realize that we're all together in this. So Absolutely. thank you again. Very, very right. much. I appreciate it. And uh, good night to you, Shala. Good night to our listeners, and thank you so much for joining again. us again for another Fireside Chat. Thank and you. And have a great solstice. <laughs> I will. I'm going to go have a ceremony now as we speak. <laughs> All right. Terrific.